Hey guys, welcome to my Seaman Says YouTube channel. Watch our interviews with big name stars, highlights from the podcast and more. Hit subscribe and don't forget to like, comment and share. Right guys, we've got Alfie on, who's a, a Southampton journalist and I'm sure he's got a lot to say after the news that we've had on Monday morning about Hassan Hootel being sacked. So let's welcome Alfie. Wow, Hello. good tash. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Someone Hasn't knew they were coming on David Seaman's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard a tash that good, David? <laughs> that good. That's a good one. It'll <laughs> yeah, be gone in a few weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a November? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, good stuff. Good stuff. But I might keep it based on that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, is, that, is that a week's work? Uh, do you know what? I do like to give myself a little bit of a head start. It's probably more like two or three, to be honest. I was going to say, that's impressive <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't well, be in here, though. That'll be 38 <laughs> years worth for me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I'm very much not. No, um, a good effort, Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> and good pause as well. Are you are you shocked, Alfie, that he's gone? Uh, no, I'm not shocked because I think the writing's been on the wall for quite a while now. Um, since the sort of 3-0 defeat to Brentford in, in May last season, um, there's been less and less support every week, if you like. Um, he What Ralph's really good at is getting a result when it matters most. He's really good at keeping himself in the job. So when they lost to, um, I think it was Everton quite recently, people thought, well, you know, it's got to be the end now. But then he goes and gets a point against West Ham. He beats Bournemouth. They get a point against Arsenal, um, as you'll be familiar with. And it keeps him in the job for two more weeks. But then they fall back into the same patterns. They lose to Palace. Um, and then this weekend, Newcastle, they're a brilliant side. But you just, you know, you, you felt it was coming. We were told last night that he was going to be sacked. Um, we just didn't know when it was going to happen. It could have been any time in the next week. Um, that, for me, is the real issue over the last six months. There's no clarity on these issues. There's no clarity on the way they want to play. There's no clarity mm. on who the best team is. There's no clarity, really, on how it's working because there's a new number two, Ruben Sellers. We don't know who's sort of sharing the power about. And I think, yeah, they're, at their best, they've been really clear, but they've been muddled recently. And I think people have expected this for a long time. Do you do you think it's harsh, as in, you, because of the way that Southampton work, you know, where they, it's hard for them to hold on to their best players you know, because they're forever selling their best players? Um, yeah, there's, yeah. And will, will do you think that the new the new manager will get more money? You know, it, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. You know, I find it really like strange that they got rid of him now. You know, and not at the start of the season. I was going to say, he's almost, I, I feel like, been a, a victim of circumstance to a certain extent because he's come in and he's had ownership that ha couldn't invest or didn't want to invest. Mm -hmm. um, and he lost a lot of experienced players during those years. And he lost a captain. He lost our top goal scorer. Um, and all of a sudden, we do have ownership that's willing to open the wallet a little bit. And it's the wrong time for him. And because he's been so battered over the past couple of seasons, he's almost lost his identity. And um, and it, it's weird because I, I saw on Twitter yesterday, that um, last night, that someone put, oh, if he was in the frame for the job right now as a fresh Ralph, mm. would you pick him? And actually, you might do, because I think he would be a very exciting prospect. But, you know, the, the, the reasons that, you know, for, for instance, that he's shed that team that, got the nine nils, you know, and, and, and Bednarek went to, to Villa because he wanted to get that sort of out of the dressing room. I think he was a victim of that himself to a certain extent. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Adam. And I think the timing has been poor for him because, like, like you say, under the previous owner, Gao Jisheng, they've not been able to spend before selling for three years. And he's kept them in the division every single season. This time, as you know, they've backed him. They've given him an all-new backroom staff, um, apart from Richard Kitzbickler, who's also left the club with him today. He was really the only one of Ralph's men who stayed and, and the goalkeeper coach as well. Um, a whole new backroom staff, £70 million worth of players, albeit young players and no striker, which is what he said he wanted to us all August. He said at the start of the month, we, you know, we need another striker. They never got it. But as a result of having that back in, the pressure was then on. Rather than being right, well, as long as you're you know, somewhat coasting in the division, you're going to stay in a job. It was, well, now we need to see results. We need to see improvement. And I don't think that media leaks have helped over the last sort of six or seven weeks. I'm sure you'll agree, Adam. There's mm. been a lot of stuff that's come out um, about, you know, relationships with players. And, and we know this stuff happens, but I think he's undermined him over the last few weeks and it's got to a point where it was untenable. I also heard last month, Alfie, now I know that you said that you've been expecting this since May, but I, I got a little tip off, I think it was probably five, six weeks ago, 
um, to say that he was going and that they were just waiting for the time. So all these things that, you know, if that gets my way, it means it's got to a lot of other journalists as well. And mm. and I, I just wonder whether there was a, a part of the club testing the water a little bit. Is is it a little bit <clears> like <throat> government? You know, you're leaking a little bit of information to see what the reaction is. Do you think some of that has gone on? And also, do you think that when when Gerard left Villa and then we've had the situation, I'm a Wolves fan at, at Wolverhampton Wanderers, there have been a lot of uh, different challenges in getting managers in at the moment. Were they trying to work out who they wanted? Is there a contingency? Yeah, I think you're right. And I, I wouldn't like to accuse anyone of anything, but you know for a fact that when a new ownership comes in, they obviously have their own ideas about who they want to lead the club and all these sorts of things. You see at Chelsea, Thomas Tuchel losing his job, even though you know they won the Champions League and whatnot, just because a new owner wanted his guy. So I don't doubt for a second that those kind of things happen where they think, well, this isn't our man, so let's see what, what the reaction is. You know, Do people want something different? Is there an anchor in for that? Um, but I think it is a shame. And uh, yeah, I think it's a shame. Has there been any whispers of, a, of who is going to come in? Personally, I, I don't know. But I mean, the latest one today is Nathan Jones um, from Luton Town. Obviously, two really successful spells at Luton, not so successful at Stoke. I think he had a, an 18% win percentage there. Um, I don't think that's an appointment that is going to make uh, Southampton fans really, really excited. <laughs> no. um, you know, it's, it's not that he's a bad manager or anything, but it's just another unproven manager, isn't it, in the Premier League. And when you've already got a squad that's full of unproven 18 to 20-year-olds, even though... Admittedly, the 18 to 20-year-olds are the best players in the squad right now. Yeah. It's a massive punt when you've already got an inexperienced playing squad. Why don't you go for Michael Beale and he can he can react and say, actually, you know, um, w- w- there's only so many places between us in the league right now, even though we know the championship's a bad season. And then QPR, I don't think they've won yeah. since then, have they? That was an interesting one. But um, yeah, maybe Michael Beale for working with new talent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's a hilarious situation that QPR, what have they done since? Mm. Since he made that comment, I know, I know that Wolves are in dire Yeah, it's the only thing that's putting a um, smile on my face this but, morning, Linz. Yeah. <laughs> but the season has got a long way to go. And the championship season, even longer. And you're right about Nathan Jones. You know, there's certain managers, I think, that just do well at one mm. club. They're just those managers that you can put them back at that one club, they'll do really well. But at the moment, he's not proven himself anywhere Someone else. said, oh, it's an exciting young prospect. And I was like, the dude's 49 years old. <laughs> 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 well, in managerial terms, he's quite young, I suppose. But uh, you know, Eddie, how everyone mm. thought when he didn't work at Bur- Burnley, but was doing well at Bournemouth, but now he is showing that he can do it somewhere else. That could be the case, but yeah, it wouldn't inspire well, me you- massively. I did find it quite interesting, Adam, that when you were um, you were talking, you were saying about um, you know the nine nils. Mm. I have to say. The fact that that's plural and two of those happened, <laughs> is there a part of you that thinks that Haas and Hootle did well to stay as long as he oh, did? Oh, sure. Yeah, no. I, I think uh, the second one I can kind of explain away a little bit. The first one's a little bit harder to swallow. I left the stadium at 7-0. At seven I, couldn't, I couldn't take any more that day. <laughs> that's not something you say every day, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> At least you got to seven. <laughs> yeah, stomach seven. And if you'd seven. have left at five, no one would have, yeah. Um, I, 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 it's sad. Do you know what? It is sad because I truly believe that he he is a very hard worker and he, and he did give his all to the club. And I, it's you can't say that about a huge amount of managers. And before mm. that, Christ, we had Mark Hughes, who was so clueless. And even the, the Pochettino and the, and the Kuman era that was incredibly su- su- successful for, for Saints, Ralph almost felt like a different breed, you know. And you, when you saw that 1 0 win against Liverpool, I think that epitomised it. On his knees, shed a tear, like he just lived and breathed for it. And, and, and I think that's why it's sad that it hasn't worked out. Um, I think things have an expiry date, don't they? Because only Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp have been in their Premier League jobs for longer than Ralph. When, when you're a club like Southampton, that's quite the statistic. You know, you don't tend to keep hold of managers for that long. Mm. I think there is sympathy mm. for him at the club. I've seen an email today that was sent out to all the, the key members of staff. Um, uh, it hasn't gone out publicly, but I've had a look at it. And they, they mention the fact that, you know, he they call it drive, endless energy and commitment. They thank him for that. They say that his legacy is one of improving the infrastructure and player development. So they don't they don't think he's a guy who's you know they're getting rid of and they, they they're never going to miss him. 
But things things do come to an end, and it's a very long time. And I just feel that, and I've been told by a few people that he was a little bit uh, sour to be around by the end. And mm. I think that's totally understandable all the pressure that's on him and his things. So it's it's just a clean break. Um, hopefully, it's somebody in. you were throwing names out the hat there. I thought Nottingham Forest actually did well to give Steve Cooper a new contract when they did, because I think Steve Cooper is somebody who could potentially have been tapped up by another club like Southampton, um, someone like Eddie Howe, perhaps, who then goes on to do to do well at a slightly bigger club. Do you think it's a panic by the board at Southampton as in, to get rid of him because they really fear relegation? I think it's not a panic because it's been coming for a long time. They wanted to wait until the break. Everyone knows that the, they wanted to wait until the World Cup break. They wanted to wait a week longer. I think their hand might have been a little bit forced by um, the result on the weekend and, and subsequent reports that have come out. I don't think it's a panic, though. I think they've been preparing for this for a while. And, um, you know, they knew it was going to happen. Uh, Alfie, just, um, I think I know Adam's thoughts on this, but I'm going to say two words to you um, and I want your reaction. Sean Dyche. <sighs> yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> I, to podcast, I just you can't think... see that. <laughs> <laughs> Helen's done this to all He's of us. He's done that to just... Lynn's as well about Wolves. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Look, I understand that. I yeah, don't think it's the right yeah. fit. I don't think it's the right fit, but I think Why? he's a quality manager. I just don't. I just don't think it's what Southampton want or need. I think that the idea is that they they want to go with this young profile of players. They want to bring the best players from Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool abroad. They want to bring those into the club. I just I just don't know if that's a Sean Dyke way of managing. It's not. Whoa. It simply isn't. I, I agree with you, Alfie. It's, it's not the development, isn't it, of yeah. the younger players? I, I, he's, he doesn't have the right philosophy of football for for Southampton and and what they've built so far. If they want to continue that, or they if they're going to scrap all of that then it puts us in very precarious circumstances. Yeah, but at, at, the, at this moment, though, Adam, they're, they're low. They're, 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 they're struggling. But they're not as low as wolves. <laughs> 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 but like now, it's, you need had, somebody. Had Leicester not turned it around a bit, had Leicester not turned it around a bit, then I think Brendan Rodgers would have been a good fit at Southampton. More so I than really Dyche. Do. But I can't see that happening mm. now. Uh, yeah. He's not a particularly popular guy in Southampton, either is he, Brendan Rogers, I don't think. No, not after. So, yeah. what, you can't pick based on popularity, can you? But... No, it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see what they get in. You know, are they going to go with a tried and trusted manager or, you know, like, like what you're saying, someone that's going to try and develop the, the youth that's in the team? But, so the big, go on. But it's 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 about avoiding relegation now. Hmm. That's what it's all about. I think the big thing about Southampton has been the playbook. They they talk famously about this playbook that they've created and they they've pushed it down to the under fifteen. So the playbook is a formation, a set way of playing. Uh, the, you know the all the fundamentals. They put it right down to under fifteens and under sixteens this season. They play at the eighteens. They play at the twenty ones with this way, you know, this philosophy, and they're quite successful. I, they've they put so much money into this. I, I just don't see them abandoning it all in favour of a panic reaction and staying in the Premier League. I think they'll believe that they can stay in the Premier League this season. The squad's not brilliant, and I think people overestimate how good Southampton's squad is, even though they think it's poor. I think they still overestimate it a little bit. It's not brilliant, but I think there's enough there to stay up. They don't need to, to get somebody to do a six-month patch job and, and forget the future. And also, just looking at how tight the league is at the moment, mm. you string a couple of wins together after the mm. World Cup, and all of a sudden... You look pretty healthy, you know. So, it's yeah, I agree with you, Alfie. It's 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 not a panic just yet. Yeah, and uh, and actually, you know what? Scott Parker didn't leave Bournemouth on a very good note, did he? I mean, that that'd really kick it to them, <laughs> wouldn't it? Would Scott no. Parker be? Uh, Scott Parker is somebody who's um, I'm not. It's not a character assassination at all. But just from what I've heard, he's not somebody who's particularly brilliant to work with as a manager in terms of uh, board to manager relations. And I think Sport Republic want a lot of control. They they give their manager total control of the club, but they want somebody who's willing to work with them. That's not the impression I got with Scott Parker at Bournemouth. What, Alfie, what have you made of the um, of the title race so far? The title race, uh, I think it's got to be Man City, is not it? I know that Arsenal... Uh, no, there's a bad uh, signal now. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely having you on, Alfie. It started so well. He came up with the David Seaman tribute all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I watched Arsenal play at St Mary's a couple of weeks ago and um, if they play anything like that at all the rest of the season, then I don't think they will They will pick Man City to it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, every, everybody's saying that, you know, but like it's... Not the first time, but when I saw them on Saturday against Chelsea, I was like, mm, "This, this could mm. be interesting." You know the way that they dealt with Chelsea, 
But like you say, with Man City, even like <laughs> down to 10 men, they still managed to get a win, mm. you know. So it was, yeah, I think, you know, you, well, I don't hope you're right. Obviously, I don't. But, <laughs> yeah, it's going right. to be close. Yeah, I'm sure. Can I ask one final thing? Just seeing as there's a, a World Cup around the corner, um, how many players at Southampton would will be going for World it's good, Cup? Yeah, it's a good question actually. Because we don't really know. I mean, I think Carl Walker Peters would probably have gone given the fullback situation at England, but he's injured as well. Um, James Ward Prowse, Gareth Southgate was at St Mary's on mm. Sunday watching, and I think that probably didn't do James Ward Prowse any favours. He might be in the squad anyway. Uh, Armel Belakot, chaps, twenty year old, he's made his Germany debut last month. He could be there. But he's been injured this month as well. Romeo Lavia, 18-year-old Belgium, want him, but he's been injured this month as well. It's like all of their players that could have gone have suffered a really late injury and it scuppered them. It could be anywhere from, honestly, one to, to, to four or five. Mohamed Salasu being the only guarantee with Ghana. Right. So in conclusion, then, whoever comes in is going to have lots of time with the players. Definitely. And look, that's mm. why they wanted to wait for the break, isn't it? It's a, it's a yeah. perfect time for for clubs like Southampton. It's, a, it's an awful time to have it for clubs like Arsenal, Man City. You know, well, maybe Man City need it a little bit, actually, to get some energy back in the legs. But for teams like Arsenal, they don't want to stop playing now. They want to keep playing while they're winning. Yeah. Southampton, they can't wait to have six weeks off. 